between 1933 and 1945, the Germans lived through a period of their history which many prefer not to remember to the point of considering it a taboo subject. The self-proclaimed Third Reich, or Third German Empire, was a dark time where various atrocities were committed in the name of National Socialism, an extreme ideology that humanity must never conceive again. How is it possible that this fanaticism was able to spread so much among the German people, who in part were accomplices to these crimes against humanity? Are you interested in learning about the rise and fall of the ephemeral but significant Nazi Germany? All right, then stay until the end of the video, but before that don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Believe me, it would help me a lot. As always, let's go back to the background, and it's impossible to understand the rise of Nazism without delving into the Treaty of Versailles after World War I. Where, as you may know, the Central Powers led by the then German Empire or Second Reich were decisively defeated by the Allies. This shameful agreement forced Germany to surrender all its colonial positions, lose much of its national territory, pay exorbitant economic indemnities to the victors, and accept all the moral responsibility for the war. In conclusion, a real humiliation for the once emerging superpower of Europe. The German Empire thus becomes the Weimar Republic, a semi-presidential state that faced great hyperinflation and political instability between left and right factions. The widespread economic crisis caused several famines in the country. The inability to pay the indemnities was met with the occupation of the Ruhr industrial region by French troops, which increased suspicion towards the victorious powers. In this context, the National Socialist German Workers' Party the well-known Nazi party, was created as a successor to the German Workers' Party, with a clear ultra-nationalist, anti-communist, and anti-Semitic ideology. Its objectives were to reject the Treaty of Versailles, consolidate pan-Germanism through Lebensraum based on territorial expansion, and form a national community based on the Aryan race. In other words, ethnic cleansings, especially against Jews, and achieving a totalitarian and anti-democratic government were on this party's agenda. Some of the most prominent leaders were Karl Harrer, Anton Drexler, and above all, Adolf Hitler, a frustrated painter, an Austrian who later became a naturalized German, who no one imagined would become one of the most significant figures in history. The Nazis were gradually gaining popular support throughout Germany especially after events like the crash of 29, a new hard blow to the German economy, which was taken advantage of by Hitler, a strong leader and decisive who inspired strength and a firm hand to restore order and improve Germany's reputation. After the 1932 elections, they already had 230 seats in the Reichstag. Thus, in January, 1933 under pressure from politicians and the business community. The president and veteran of the war Paul von Hindenburg appoints Hitler as Chancellor of Germany, an event known as Machtergreifung. A month later, the Reichstag fire occurs, where the young communist Marinus von der Lübe was blamed. This fact is considered by many historians as an attack perpetrated by the Nazis themselves to blame the communists. This allowed them to enact a decree that annulled civil and press freedoms, so the police could detain people without defined charges. And of course, the worst part was for the communist opponents, as about 4,000 members of the German Communist Party were arrested. During this year, Hitler managed to gain more and more power thanks to his political maneuvers. By July, 1933, Germany had already become a one-party state, a true dictatorship that dissolved the rest of the parties and prohibited the creation of new ones. Likewise, Germany went from being a federal state to a de facto unitary one, meaning that the governments of states like Prussia or Bavaria were already controlled by the Nazis. But the event that definitively consolidated Nazism in power 
was the Night of the Long Knives. In July 1934, a series of political assassinations where about 200 opponents were eliminated in such a way that the Nazis already had control of all the state institutions. This event occurs on the eve of the death of Paul von Hindenburg. The cabinet thus determines that the office of president would be abolished and its powers merged with that of the chancellor, in this case Hitler, under the title of Führer. Thus officially born the Nazi Germany or Third Reich, which surprisingly brought relief to most Germans, as the era of conflicts and street fights of the Weimar Republic had ended in favor of a state totalitarian, but that gave them strength and hope. Already with control of all institutions, including educational ones, the process of Nazification of the Germans was quick. With rapid economic growth, an increase in the average wage, and the creation of works, public opinion turned favorable towards Hitler, despite his autocratic government. Added to this is the magnificent campaign in favor of the Nazi regime, led by Minister Josef Goebbels considered one of Hitler's closest collaborators. The Jews, for their part, being considered an impure race and the cause of Germany's misfortunes, were losing their rights. Their properties were expropriated, and little by little they were seen as true second-class citizens. From 1935 they were persecuted and cornered into ghettos. Concentration camps had already been created in 1933, but initially only for political prisoners. Another factor applauded by the Germans were the constant violations of the shameful Berkalis Treaty, which included the rearmament of the German army. In foreign policy, Hitler began an approach to Benito Mussolini's fascist regime in Italy, also resentful of the Allies for not having obtained the promised territories despite having supported them in World War I. Both totalitarian regimes supported the rebel side during the Spanish Civil War in favor of dictator Francisco Franco. The Allied powers, for their part, began a policy of appeasement, reflected in facts such as the non-imposition of sanctions on Germany for its intervention in the Spanish War. In March 1938, Hitler sends an ultimatum to the Austrian Chancellor, demanding that he hand over all power to the Austrian Nazi Party. After all, in Vienna, the Nazi and pan-German ideology had also spread. So on March 12, the Anschluss took place, by which Austria was annexed to Nazi Germany. German troops entered the country the next day, being enthusiastically received by the population. The following month, Germany annexed the Sudetenland, a Czechoslovak region with a German majority, which was accepted by British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain in the Munich Agreement. This would only be the prelude to total control over Czechoslovakia, when in March 1939 the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia was created in the remnant of the Czech part of the country, as well as the Slovak Republic the first puppet state of Nazi Germany. The next target was Poland, a country that re-emerged after the Great War at the expense of the former German territories. After signing the Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact with the Soviet Union, despite the great rivalry with this communist state, the invasion of Poland took place on September 1, 1939, in response, its allies France and the United Kingdom break the policy of appeasement and declare war on Germany in favor of their respective defense agreements with Poland. Thus begins the Second World War. Although initially there were no mutual aggressions in a period known as the Phony War or Zitzkrieg. Hitler, for his part, would order during this period the Operation Weserübung, in which he launches an invasion on the neutral Denmark and Norway. The former falls in just one day, while the latter held out for a month. In this way, Germany ensures the shipment of ore and iron from Sweden for the manufacture of weapons, while turning both countries into territories under civil administration or Reichskommissariat. The war drug ends with the Battle of France, in which Germany takes the offensive and in just 45 days achieves a decisive victory against France, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg, territories that they occupy in their entirety, except for the southern part of France, 
where they establish a new puppet state known as Vichy France. It is important to highlight that for this, Germany already had the support of fascist Italy, who in their attempts to conquer Greece, North Africa and Yugoslavia, ends up needing German help, which costs them to delay other plans. Although in the latter they managed to get new puppet states like Croatia and Netix Serbia. As for the United Kingdom, it would be the only ally that was not invaded by Germany, as it was repelled during the Battle of Britain. In short, the most important delayed plan was Operation Barbarossa, which consisted of breaking the Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact and attacking the Soviet Union. A confrontation that due to the ideological rivalry between Nazism and Communism was going to happen eventually. For the important Eastern Front, delegated to the leader of the Schussstaffel, Henry Himmler, they had the support of several allied countries of the Axis that added millions of fighters. By August, 1,942 Nazi Germany had reached its maximum expansion by conquering large parts of the USSR, where it founded new Reichskommissariat in territories of present-day Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, and the Baltic countries. However, the major turning point occurs with the Battle of Stalingrad, the bloodiest combat in human history where Germany is forced to retreat. This defeat is compounded by the entry into the war of new powers in favor of the allies such as the United States, who is fighting in the Pacific against Germany's other ally, the hero of Japan. In this context, Hitler declares a total war state in 1943 in which the closure of non-essential businesses for the war effort is established and the recruitment of women into the workforce so that men can enlist in the army. Goebbels is appointed as plenipotentiary for total war, who now puts all his efforts into increasing the army's manpower, as well as the production of armaments. However, this was not enough for the Axis powers to start retreating from various fronts from 1943, such as in the East, North Africa and in Italy, where a civil war begins. In the West, the point of no return begins with the Battle of Normandy where with the support of the United States and Canada, the Allies managed to liberate France and start the offensive on the Western Front. From here, the retreat on all fronts led to a sharp reduction in the popularity of the Nazi regime, which included an assassination attempt on Hitler in July 1944. As the Soviets advanced, they denounced the horrors found in the concentration camps set up by Germany in all the conquered territories. Jews, gypsies, communists, opponents, and homosexuals were the targets of extermination of the Nazi ideology. Of course, German civilians were also not free from crimes perpetrated by their enemies. Notable are the massacres by the USSR in East Prussia as well as the various bombings of German cities like Dresden, which was destroyed after a firestorm. On April 16, 1,945 Soviet troops arrived in the German capital, where the Battle of Berlin broke out. When enemy troops were two blocks away from the Reich Chancellery, Hitler and his lover Eva Braun committed suicide, according to the official historiography, it should be noted. This meant that power fell to Karl Donitz as president and Josef Goebbels as chancellor, who, unable to withstand the pressure, followed in his leader's footsteps and committed suicide with his wife after poisoning their six children. The tragic end of their leaders also represents the end of Nazi Germany, as well as the end of World War II in Europe. All territories occupied by Germany are liberated, and the national territory is once again diminished. Subsequently, Germany is divided into four zones distributed by the Allies. France, United Kingdom, United States, and the Soviet Union exerted four zones of influence over defeated Germany. At the same time, Berlin was divided. This led to the Germans being divided into two republics after four years of occupation, within the context of the Cold War. Democratic or Eastern Germany would be to the east of the Iron Curtain, and would become a socialist state under the influence of the Soviet Union. The federal or western Germany joins the capitalist bloc led by the United States to the west of the curtain. Berlin, for its part, is divided for posterity 
by a wall that represented an era of division of the German people that would last until the end of the Cold War. Today, the atrocities of Nazi Germany are remembered in universal history as a clear proof that no extremism is good. And despite all the defeats and disappointments, the German people have risen from the ashes and have become the hegemonic power of their continent. Of course, after looking to the future instead of continuing to lament the mistakes of the past. Do you think the Nazi period should be something Germans should feel ashamed of? Don't forget to leave your comment. And if you like this video, support me with a like and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on my social networks. And if you are interested in supporting this project, any donation on Patreon where we can talk about history is welcome. In addition, you can find exclusive content on my platform elmapadecibas.tv. See you next time. Thank you.